So I don't think I've ever seen an anime that does change so gradually and so natural amongst the characters throughout each and every episode. I think Parasite is one of the best at doing that because the whole, I think, big idea of Parasite and the whole thing that is constantly pushed is these people are changing. These people are morphing. They're changing into parasites. They're losing their emotions or the parasites are gaining emotions, whatever the case may be. And throughout each and every episode, even if not a major thing happens, at the very least, you will get some progression amongst the characters and the characterization and development and whatnot. So I definitely got to say that an episode like this yet again, while nothing major happened, ultimately it was just showcasing yet again, Shinichi is changing more and more and more as each and every episode passes, but also Tommy is changing. Migi's changing, everything amongst these characters is morphing their emotions and everything and they're either losing or gaining more. I think the more time you spend in the world and the more different people you meet and the atmospheres you're around ultimately play an effect. And again, Parasite is just doing so well at keeping, even though it has the supernatural elements of the Parasites, of course, some sort of level-headed, grounded to reality aspect regarding the characters and how they act. Now, for starters, you got that investigator that he's kind of, sort of, in a weird way, obsessed with the case regarding, you know, Shinichi because he'd never seen anything like that. And ultimately, what Shinichi did to him was pretty, you know, funny when he caught him and he was like, yo, you're gonna listen to my story, bro. So we have a human out there right now that knows the entirety of the story. Now, depending on what this investigator decides to do, this could shake things up a bit. If he gets too scared of the situation because... Even towards the end, he was still scared and skeptical. He could go to the cops right now and make a nationwide manhunt for these two people, Tamiya and Shinichi. He could totally do that. So that's definitely a wild card that's been thrown out. And I think a big setup for whenever the case may be, if he decides he's going to help Shinichi, he feels bad for him, or he's going to fuck him over big time. And I think that that's what it did to throw something out there for later on down the road in the story. And then throughout this episode, because obviously we find out that Tamiya was the one that hired him or whatnot, you can see that Tamiya is torn and she's slowly changing while she still has has a lot of these dead emotions of not giving a fuck because at times you see like she's carrying the baby by like the back of his fucking shirt or something like that it's like okay that's totally not human-like behavior but then you see her on the roof carrying the baby normally and it's constantly like a, a change between like her one minute she's laughing with emotions next minute she's dead serious and I think that that's the change within her now I don't know if it was because of the reproductive nature of like having the baby inside of her that maybe set her on course to change if it was humanity in general because she's part of that organization that is supposedly going for change but the difference is they don't exhibit the same qualities or the same change that you know Tamiya is exhibiting then again we haven't been around them long enough to see you know clearly but ultimately Tamiya legitimately I feel wants to change. I think what she was talking about, like, coexisting with humanity and whatnot, she would possibly, as time goes on, I could see her legitimately living in society and a normal function. The other people, I don't know if that's the same case as well, so we got a little bit of a display as well as to, like, the organization and what Tamiya is doing with them. We got to see Joe and that other dude for a little bit, and I guess they're still sticking around. I think that they're gonna be an essential piece later on down the road, and I could totally see them dying or something to either save Shinichi or something along the lines of that is gonna happen. So, it's keeping them around, keeping us aware of them, and that's good because if something major is gonna happen and they're gonna be involved later on, then at least we're reminded, okay, they exist. I definitely gotta say the one problem with this episode, the major problem was that the art was off in several different aspects, like the character design for Shinichi, and at times I'm looking like, oh, this character looks totally off. So, the one thing I would say about this episode that definitely caught my was that the art was kind of off the character designs the character models etc but there were some scenes that looked stupendous as well especially that finale you know the final scene of the episode where Shinichi is smiling they put great detail and the art looked gorgeous there so I will give props like it wasn't totally like oh my god an eyesore and even the bad parts weren't necessarily like terrible or anything like that it was just you know awful or not and speaking of that final scene we need to talk about that because that was a clear yet again showcase of his change every time up until this particular point when Shinichi has thought of his mother, he gets these crazy emotions and usually is like he wants to cry, he feels terrible. But this time around when he thought of his mother and the parasite that took over, he smiled at the thought of saying, I killed the person that, you know, did this to me. And that, again, shows that he's gone darker. While in the episode, you know, prior to that particular point, we see Mihi talk as if he knows that Shinichi is a good person and explaining what type of a strong man and how he respects him almost in a way so you see that Migi's changed to that regard and Shinichi's changed like Migi's getting lighter 
and Shinichi's getting darker, and this episode displayed that yet again, so, with all that being said, it was a good episode, nothing major, again, it was more so progressing on the character development, but not on the actual, you know, overall plot, whatnot, so, I'd say it's between, like, a 7 to a 7.5, probably a 7, because, again, not too many major things happen, and the art was kind of off in certain aspects, but, yet again, a good episode, still, Parasite, I mean, at the end of the day, it's fucking Parasite, I doubt I'll ever give it anything under a 7. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode, what do you think about Shinichi, yet again, going darker, and Migi going lighter, could you see... At the end of the series, Shinichi going so far to the point where Migi has to say, yo, chill out, bro. Like, what are you doing now that's, that you've gone too far? Because I can definitely see that happening at some given point. And also with Tamiya, could you see Tamiya at some given point slowly losing everything that was parasitic about her? Like, you know, just killing people and everything. Could you see her going completely straight at the end of this road? Also, just want to note this episode, I wasn't feeling any sort of irritation. And I realized, holy shit, there was no Murano in this episode. Sorry, Murano, as much as I think you're a cutie or whatever, that little, oh, why are you acting like this, has been getting annoying. So, thank goodness we got a little calm period without her. And just your overall thoughts of the episode. Again, good episode for the most part. A lot of character development with this one, but that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, if you can do so as well, that'd be awesome. I'm Fanel World, and as always, people, have an awesome day.